Our third of four RISE principles focuses on the family. The S in RISE is for strong family values. From the beginning of creation, marriage and family have been an important institution established by God in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 30, where the emphasis is mankind created in the image of God to fulfill God's purposes. It extends to Genesis chapter 2, verses 20 through 24, where the emphasis is on finding a helper, a companion suitable for Adam, a constituent part that helps complete Adam, but also the image of God. Marriage and family are a sacred bond, and Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6, that the husband and wife become one flesh, and that what God has joined together should not be separated. The epistles elaborate more on family dynamics with instructions for husbands, wives, and children, found in 1 Peter chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, and Colossians chapter 3. Further admonitions for parents and children are found in Colossians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21, and Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, as Paul tells the church to honor their parents and parents not to frustrate your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Frederick Douglass understood the ramifications of not having strong families and values. And he said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. The rise principles of strong family values echoes these sentiments. Strong family values states that marriage is intended to be a permanent relationship between one man and one woman and is a foundation for a healthy and stable family. Marriage functions to satisfy the longings of the human heart, to give and receive love, to welcome and ensure the full physical and emotional development of children, and the installation of moral principles and values. Strong family values must be preserved and impressed upon each generation. The natural family is the foundation of society. Therefore, the state should promote its formation and interfere in its function as little as possible. Family unity and interdependency is necessary to foster and encourage culture, learning, long-term national stability. Therefore, two-parent households should be encouraged and fatherhood honored, diminishing the development of delinquency in children and young adults. Education begins at home and is the first classroom children have. The family thus serves as the center for social, educational, economic, and spiritual life to build strong bonds among the generations and to pass on a way of life that has transcendent meaning. Since education begins at home, it should remain the prerogative of parents to choose where to send their children for further instruction. Human life is sacred and inviolable from conception to natural death. Protection for the unborn and elderly and compassion for the sick and infirm are essential elements of a culture of life and necessary for the health of a civil and God-fearing society. The free exercise of religious faith is paramount to the health and well-being of a free society. Government is prohibited in this establishment of any religion, but also prohibited in interfering in the practice thereof. Citizens, therefore, should be free to worship as they choose without fear of government interference, coercion, or manipulation. The church is the extension of the family and the instrument for the work of God to impact societal values. Duty, honor, self-sacrifice, love of neighbor and country are some of those values, but equally important are the pursuit of justice and equality before the law. It is the church where the disenfranchised and the marginalized find redemption, restoration, forgiveness, and reconciliation before God and man. 